Hey, what's up you guys? So today I want to talk to you about a topic that is very divisive in the little people community and it's basically the topic of drug studies for the treatment of achondroplasia. Hey everyone, my name is Cynthia Veronica and in case we're meeting for the first time, I have two children and my oldest is Sebastian and he has achondroplasia which is the most common form of dwarfism. So the topic of drugs such as um, Biomarin's new drug treatment for um, achondroplasia is very polarizing in the LP community and quite understandably so. So there are actually several pharmaceutical companies and Biomarin is just one of them that is working on uh, manipulating the FGFR3 gene, which is what causes the disproportionate short stature in children. And this is specifically for children whose growth plates are still open. So it's not something that could be applied to adults or to older children whose growth plates have been closed or who have completed puberty. So I actually attended the um, National LPA conference in 2018 in Orlando, Florida. And, and during the conference, Mark Povinelli, who is the president of LPA, actually addressed this issue in his speech. And one thing that he said that was so profound was he reminded the community that, you know, in the early stages of LPA, um, there were a lot of pituitary dwarfs that were part of the community. And with the advent of growth hormones and growth hormone therapy, a lot of the pituitary dwarfs pretty much dropped off from LPA. They were being treated using the growth hormone therapy and, and so they were no longer active members of the community. So all of a sudden, um, the LPA national conferences and local community meetings kind of changed and the types of people with dwarfism that were attending really changed. And this was because the presence of pituitary dwarfs were just not as prominent as it was before. So in that same vein, Mark Povinelli said in his speech that, you know, LPA is ever evolving. It changed back then, it's going to continue to change, but we are still here to stay and LPA will always be strong. So even though the community changed with the growth hormone therapy and um, you know the types of people that were attending conferences and events really changed, the community changed, it will continue to change, but it will still be a community no matter what. For me, it's kind of hard because being a part of LPA has been so wonderful and it's really been amazing. The national conferences, my son is only um, four years old, but you know, since we've attended conferences and meetings, it has been an amazing community to be a part of. I mean, I love that we've met so many people that we never would have met otherwise from all over the country and also all over the world. Um, it's been just beyond my expectations. And I love that my son is actually <laughs> considered the head of household according to LPA guidelines. So that's kind of neat. I can describe the way that I felt as at conferences as, you know, blissful, cozy, comfortable, empowering, proud. It's a beautiful sense of community and relatability, togetherness, and really empowerment. So achondroplasia is the most common form of dwarfism. It basically makes up about 80% of all the different types of dwarfism that exists. So if there is a drug that lessens the cases of achondroplasia, what does this mean for the dwarf community? For me, LPA is like family. So I view it as a family unit that is breaking up or changing in some way. It's almost like there's a death in the family. And it's important for me to see it this way because families are always changing. The family that I was born into when I was a newborn isn't the same that it is now. My household looks completely different. Nothing is static. The only thing constant in life is change. So an empowering way to view this is to see it as an opportunity because we need to view problems as opportunities. And we'll probably go through the grieving process. There's probably going to be, you know, some amount of um, feelings of abandonment, of depression, but we don't stay in that place. 
we learn from there to view this as a possibility. Um, it's also about understanding that there really isn't a loss unless we view it that way. And when I say this, I mean we just accept everyone within the community. One thing that I really love about having this online platform is that it really brings together people from all walks of life. No one is the same. We all come from different backgrounds, cultures, religious beliefs. We speak different languages in our homes. We dress differently. All of us look different, but we have one commonality. We all basically have something very special and unique that unites us. It's really a beautiful community. And what makes it even more beautiful is that we really respect each other and respect each other's decisions that we make for ourselves and for our families. No one in this community is going to agree 100% with decisions that another community member makes. Everyone's gonna have different ideas and deal with things differently. Uh, so when Sebastian was actually a newborn, I was actually approached by my genetics counselor and told about um, the Biomarin drug trials and asked if I wanted to enroll him in the drug trials. And um, I ended up declining for my own personal reasons. I didn't want him to be a part of that. Um, and this is after thinking long and hard about it and after talking to various doctors about this, different family members, I was, I was very torn. Um, I didn't quite know what to do, and I just decided not to enroll him. Um, this doesn't mean that I disagree with anyone who does want to enroll their son or daughter into the trials. It doesn't mean that I have any less respect for them because everyone makes their own decision for their family. It also doesn't mean that they are any less of a community member of LPA. It doesn't mean that they're not welcomed. I think they are welcomed, and I think I share this belief with a lot of other LP members. It's not polarizing unless we believe it to be. We are still united and we can still be an empowered group. It just means that it's evolving and the community is looking a little bit different than it used to before, but we are still a family unit. So where do we go from here? So I actually wholeheartedly believe and have trust in the LPA board and I do see that there will be a way to find peace and harmony, respect and acceptance for all LPA community members. And I just think that, you know, the LPA will have to find creative ways to make it happen and to keep that bond and to not create separation, to not create barriers, not to build a wall between different community members. I think that there's still opportunities to promote dwarf pride no matter where you are in the spectrum in terms of drug treatments. And I do think that it's important that we keep this sense of community, not just for ourselves, but for our kids. So we can really search for ways to drop that old thought process, drop those walls, drop those barriers, and really be embracing of everyone in the community and find that commonality, find that sense of of um, respect and awareness for others and, and really um, keep that bond. We don't have to drop our beliefs. I don't think that we have to feel vulnerable or weak or defenseless in these situations, but we can still find a way to accept others and to you know, broaden our connections with them and to find a place for them in the group. So I do feel really good about the present state and the future of LPA. I am so inspired by so many LPs and parents of LPs and what they have taught me in this community. And I love being a part of it. I love what it has taught me. And I also wanted to share with you that I am coming from a place of love and respect, openness and acceptance. So thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.